Okay, so why is it, why do you think that in six to eight hours, you were able to cure 80% of your PTSD symptoms on MDMA when you'd spent a lifetime using other therapies? What was it about the six to eight hours on MDMA for someone who's never tried psychedelic medicines before that really was able to, to help you so dramatically? I think every, I, that's, the, that, that's the greatest question you could possibly ask. I think the whole scientific community be, should be clamoring to find that out. We, I mean, I want to know personally, like, what happened? Like, no, I mean, it's not like I'm making this up. There's, there's probably entire file drawers of medical, uh, like, brilliant doctors, probably two, 20 doctors' uh, files on me for years. And then suddenly it's over? In six to eight hours. Right. <laughs> so, you know, this, this is mind-boggling. The thing that I'm told, and I, do, I did experience this, was that the medicine is a very specialized medicine that uh, enhances awareness with reducing anxiety. So if you take an anti-anxiety medicine and you do psychotherapy, you could probably you know, be more able to talk about a traumatic event and address that traumatic event without falling apart and re-traumatizing yourself. But you won't because you're not anxious about it anymore. You know, you're just kind of spacing out. You're not as, as aware. Or if you don't have... Uh, something reducing your consciousness, the idea of going, touching base really to a traumatic event is out horrifying. I mean, it re-traumatizes you. you do that. With the assistance of the MDMA, you, it yes. relaxed your anxiety and you were able to go back and live and relive traumatic mm -hmm. circumstances that had happened in your life. And even follow the cloudy distant memories that I had shut away and didn't want to look at, I was able to actually look at them and put together pieces of my history and my puzzle that I just kept in serious scary land, just freaking me out like a monster in the closet under the bed. Could you and, tell us about any of those well, uh, particular memories? One thing that, um, that came up was and it, what's horrible about this is that I had, um, I remembered that my mother had left me in the, uh, with this kind of cult of personality guy. They, they were like hippies and they had these ideologies about, you know, reincarnation and all this stuff. So this person was a very powerful cultish figure among these, among my, my mother and her friends. And she left me with him. Okay. For three, what I was told was going to be three weeks. What I realized, it was six weeks. So you imagine I was four, four years, years old. old. Yeah. And of course, um, anyone who's like really wants to take care of your child for you, who's got a megalomania complex, red flag, but nobody's going to think that. Of course he was a pedophile. Of course he was a monster. He was horrible. And I, and it, it was an incredibly terrible experience. He was also very, very skilled at basic brainwashing techniques, how to use another kid against me to control me, how to convince me. Uh, I turned five when I was with him, how that if I had told anybody that terrible things would happen and how to kind of make it, me think he was a magician and he had all these powers, he could read minds. And, he, and you know, I really s suffered in complete brainwash to repress what happened. So I didn't think it was really important to really remember or tell anybody all that had happened. But apparently defying him was important. So with the MDMA assisted psychotherapy, I was able to say, okay, this is what I remember. Was and, that and one deal of your with first the, times about and, talking yeah. about it? Um, that deeply, yes. Mm -hmm. And deal with the anxiety and the terror and the pain that that meant that somebody's going to die. My somebody I love is going to die, my mom, my kid, my whatever, that if you tell, he's going to get you. He has supernatural abilities. But that was like a huge barrier to my recovery because it was vaulted. It was systematically trained into me to have that kind of a, a, a you know, self-destructive. It was like a, a fail-safe, you open this letter, it blows up, you know. <laughs> um, so for me... And, and this could be the case for other people um, who have been in the secrecy and shame of trauma from traumatic events where it was very complicated. You know, this is a revered and, and respected person that my mother 
and other people liked a lot who had this terrific power. I mean, it was a really locked in thing. With the therapy, I was able to figure out the combination lock on how to untangle myself from that. It still affected me. I mean, I still had tremendous anxiety, even years later, but it wasn't making me throw up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, like in regular therapy, it would be like, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom now because this, the, the, you know, the, the, dis, the self-destruction clause would get hit. You know, it was programmed into me mm -hmm. to not exist if I told those secrets. So, yeah, very, very dangerous um, uh, territory that I could not have gone into without the assistance of my highest self where the medicine helped me access that.